All right, we are starting a fat daddy problem. There's a lot of steps that go into this, so take your time. We'll go slowly, but understand what our, what our goal is. We're given a polynomial. Now, as of right now, it could be any number in the world. So we're gonna be fine tuning our search before we even start solving. So right now, anything in the world might be an option. So our round one of defining our search is to look at our potential possible real roots, uh, potential negative real roots, and our potential imaginary roots. So that's what we start with. Now, using Descartes' rule of sign, we're gonna find our number of positive real roots first. We refer to that as hashtag PRR, number of positive real roots. What we do first is look for the number of sign changes. Notice there is no sign change. There's one sign change. There's a second sign change. There's a third sign change. So what we look for is when it goes from positive to negative. Positive to positive, no change. Positive to negative, one change. Negative to positive, two change. Positive to negative, three changes. Now here's where you gotta be careful. That means there could be three potential positive real roots. But Descartes' rule of science says, and then our scenarios run down by two. What that means is if there's three, there could also be one, it can't go to negative, right? We're not gonna have a negative amount of solutions. So that's how we get our positive real roots. That's our potential. We could have three or we could have one. Now, we have to find the number of potential negative real roots. Hashtag NRR. Now for this, you have to find F of negative X. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, because I'm only looking for the signs, I don't care about the coefficients. I look at the signs. What some of you have started doing, and I actually recommend, don't even worry about writing the whole equation down. Just think about whether it'll be positive or negative. If I put a negative x and do it to the fourth power, it stays positive. If I do a negative x to the third power, it becomes a negative x, times 13 will give me a negative. Negative x squared will give me a positive, times the negative eight stays negative. Negative x times 13 keeps it negative, and the negative 12 stays negative. Now, I know I did that pretty quickly, but you're only investing in the sign of f of negative x. So you'll notice, look, there's only one sign change. From here on out, stays negative. So that means I only have one potential negative real root. Only one potential negative real root. So how do we find our potential imaginary roots? Or hashtag P-R-I-R, I said that wrong, hashtag P-I-R, potential imaginary roots. Well, look at your highest degree. There's four potential roots here. So run our scenarios. If I had three positives and one negative, that's four. So there are no imaginaries in that scenario. Run your other scenario. If you have one positive and one negative, that means there's two left. So we've just identified all our potential scenarios of positive real roots, negative real roots, and imaginary roots. Okay, we just honed in on our search a little more. Today we talked about P's and Q's. We're not talking manners, we're talking about potential solutions now. P is represented by your constant term. Q is represented by your lead coefficient. So what we need to do first is think of all the factors of P. So I'm gonna list those. The factors of negative 12 are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, plus or minus 12. Whew, there's a lot there. Factors of four, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. Okay, now, my potential solutions, my potential roots, my potential zeros, my potential x-intercepts, those are all synonymous, is any combination of a factor of P over a factor of Q. Whoo, lots of them. Let's list it, okay? Start simple. We're gonna take all of these and put them over one. 
So it will be that exact list. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12. All right. Now, we could have all of these over 2. Now, keep in mind, some of them are going to repeat. For instance, uh, well, 1 over 2 is going to give us 1 half. That's a new one. But if I put 2 over 2, you realize that's 1. It's already in the list. 3 over 2, that's a new one. 4 over 2, nope. 6 over 2, nope. 12 over 2, nope. Those are all repeats if you were to reduce it. Almost done. Now we take all of them and put it over 4. Well, 1 fourth, there's a new one. 2 over 4, nope, that's a half. 3 over 4, there's a new one. Let's see if there's any more. 4 over 4, no. 6 over 4, no. 12 over 4, no. Okay, so whew, that was a decent setup, but it only took, well, I guess six minutes. But if I'm not explaining it and you're doing it on your own, you might be able to do it a little faster, okay? We now know these are the scenarios of how our potential roots could come about, and these are our actual potential roots that we can start trying, okay? So let's talk about how we start solving. What I look at first is my scenarios. I realize that I will be guaranteed at least one positive and one negative real root. I recommend going with the negative first because again, you get the positive, that's great, but there might be three of them, so you might have to keep going. I'm gonna start with the negative just to try, okay? So when I look at my P's and Q's, I'm only gonna be running negatives. Now we showed this in class, the fastest way to find out if something's a root or not is to synthetically divide by it. Well, instead of rewriting the synthetic division every time, we're going to set up the chart. So I'm going to bring down my coefficients. I got a 4, a 13, negative 8, 13, negative 12. Now, I'm going to be dividing them by my possible roots. So I'm going to start with the most basic, and again, remember, I'm trying negatives. I'm trying negatives because I know I'm guaranteed at least one negative real root. So I'll try negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Hopefully, if one of these hit, I'm done, right? I'm not going to have two negative real roots. I already used Descartes' rule of sign, and I know I'll only have one. By the way, this is rational root theorem if you really want vocab. All right, here we go. Synthetic division. We only are writing the results here, so here's my way of going through it. First number always comes down. We use blue. Multiply, add it to this, so we get negative 4 plus 13, 9. Multiply, add, negative 17. Multiply, add, we get 30. Now, keep in mind, I know my goal. If it's a root, the remainder will be 0. I want you to be intelligently lazy. If you realize something's not going to work out, stop. Move on to the next one. So for instance, at this moment right here, I know that if I take 30 times negative 1, it's not going to cancel out negative 12. So I'm just going to move on right now. Okay, so that's our strategy. Moving on to negative 2. 4 comes down. 4 times negative 2, negative 8, giving me 5. 5 times negative 2, negative 10, giving me negative 18. Negative 18 times 2, 36. Give me 49. Uh, I know that's not going to work out. I know it's not going to work out. Next. You see how this is a little faster than having to rewrite the synthetic division every time? Hopefully you find it as helpful as well. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 1. Negative 3, we get negative 11. 33, we get 46. Ah, not even close. Whew. Might have to do it a couple times. Come on, negative 4. 4. Negative 16, we get a negative 3, staying low, good. Positive 12, we're up to 4. Negative 16, oh shoot, I see some goods. Nailed it. Okay, so what does that tell me? Negative 4 is one of my roots. Negative 4 is one of my roots. So if I'm solving this, I know one of my roots is negative 4. So we have 
a zero remainder, which means this is a root, which means if we divide by negative four, this will give us our new polynomial. Let's take a look at our new polynomial because you have to reset. Once you find a root, you have to reset with what's left. This would form the polynomial because we started at fourth degree, drops down one, 4x to the third, minus 3x squared, plus 4x, minus 3. Now, you can go through all of this again with a brand new polynomial. But if you're good at factoring, take a look. This factors. I would always recommend factoring because it's faster. If you'll look, we got four terms. What can we try when we have four terms? Grouping. Watch the money happen. Front group shares x squared, leaving us with 4x minus 3. Now the back, you may look at that and go, they don't share anything. Debatable. They always share something. 1. You can pull a 1 out. In this case, you should pull a 1 out, leaving us with 4x minus 3. Notice they share the 4x minus 3 now. That becomes my new GCF. I pull that out, leaving me with 4x minus 3 on the outside, and x squared plus 1 on the inside. Now, our goal has been to solve this the whole time, and now I'm ready to solve. Say hz is equal to 0. This one you can do in your head. 3 fourths, which is interesting. That was a part of our original list. But aren't you glad we found negative 4 first? This would have been the last one I found. Yuck! This set equal to zero. Now, I think some of us can do it in our head, but some of you still need to see it. Subtract a one, square root, plus or minus i. So all my roots together then. Negative four, three-fourths, and plus or minus i. How many roots is that? Four. Nailed it. Can't say it was a quick one, but that's a rundown of Descartes' rule assigned to determine the number of potential roots, the rational root theorem to find our list of actual roots to try, how to assess which root is actually a remainder of zero that actually works, and how to solve what's left with the polynomial. Hopefully it helped. Enjoy.